if we use a lambda that is greater than one, what's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen to the iteration? Hmm? It'll diverge, exactly, because I get an eigenvalue that has magnitude greater than one. So, very, very close to one, if you exceed one even by a little bit, the iteration is going to diverge, not good. But if you make lambda to be smaller than one, let's say 0.6, if you make it 0.5, it'll be the slow converging negative eigenvalue is now going to be the fastest converging eigenvalue, right? So it gets rid of the slow convergence of the oscillatory modes. Now, what does it do to this one? What does uh, under relaxation do to the slowly converging smooth Eigen mode. Yes. Pretty much nothing. Yes, it puts it closer to one. That's right. And what's the effect of putting it closer to one? So yeah, at one it's about point nine eight. At point five, it'll be point nine nine. Right. What? It'll be even slower convergence. Right. So, if you just uh, apply Jacobi iteration without multigrade, it's smarter to just uh, use lambda equal to 1, just to use the origin Jacobi iteration. But with multigrade, because this mode, we shouldn't really worry about this mode, because this mode is handled by the coarser grades. So, it's a lot smarter to use a lambda that is uh, less than 1. So let's see it uh, again. So if I am uh, I'm sure of you, that's the solution we get if we don't do any on the relaxation on Jacobi. All right. And now let's do a on the relaxation on Jacobi. On the paper, it looks pretty complicated, but here it's pretty easy. So I do 0.5 times u0 plus 0.5 times Jacobi, right? So on the relaxation factor, lambda equal to 0.5 is just uh, that easy to implement. And uh, I'll also do it on the uh, post-smoothing. I'll paste it here. So this is uh, on the relaxation factor of 0.5. If I want to do it as 0.7, I'll just make 0.7 here, and what will be here? 0.3, yes. Hmm? Oh, it should be U1, thank you. All right, we are done. So, uh, so let's initialize this to zero again. Multigrade of U, those I am sure of U. Right, we get what solution we got yesterday. Okay, so basically by doing on the relaxation, uh, we can fix the problem of Jacobi iteration of not being a good smoother. The reason gauss seidel didn't have this problem and did not require uh, on the relaxation is because gauss seidel actually didn't have this very close to minus one eigenvalue. So if you think of what gauss seidel does to this particular mode, so if we do ek plus 1 gauss seidel, so what gauss seidel is going to do is it looks at uh, these two, it computes the average between these, so this is still going to be the same as Jacobi for the very first grid point. Okay, but now at the second grid point, instead of looking at these two, it'll be looking at this red one and these two. So it'll be draw a straight line over here, the second one is going to be here. Instead of drawing a straight line between uh, these two grid points, it'll draw a straight line between these two because it's using the most up-to-date value. So it'll be here and it'll be here. So this mode that converges very slowly for Jacobi is not converging very slowly for gauss seidel right? And we gauss seidel does not have a on the relaxation, uh, uh, does, does not have an eigenvalue close to minus 1. 
and for Gaussian del, it's you can even apply a over relaxation. So, for example, if we do Gaussian del here, we can even do a 1.2 here and make it minus 2.0. Minus 0 0.2 on the uh, on the one minus lambda part. So this is uh, lambda. If lambda is equal to 1.2, then one minus lambda is equal to minus 0.2, right? So that will still work. Mm. So it still gives us a good solution, even if we do. Uh, over relaxation on Gaussian L because the, the the smallest eigenvalue it's very tricky to analyze uh, but like uh, you show it is uh, the smallest eigenvalue it's uh, still a little bit away from minus one so it's okay to uh, to use the over relaxation to push it even further towards minus one with the benefit of perhaps uh, moving the largest eigenvalue a little bit further away from one so the convergence is a little bit faster. All right. Okay. Any questions on the effect of uh, uh, iterations on smoothing? And if you apply multigrade to your own problem, for example, and you find it not converging very well or diverging even, it's probably the the smoothing is a very is is you should look at the smoothing. And uh, especially pre-smoothing, if you if you make this, uh, uh, so so for some very tough problems, you five pre-smoothing pre -smoothing iterations may not be enough. You may have to do ten, even twenty, basically to make the residual you compute to be smooth enough, so that this interpolation you are doing here is not going to give you a completely bogus uh, residual. Right. Okay. So, so if you, so a, a particular bad example is I'm drawing E here. But imagine your residual on the fine grid is like the green line I'm drawing here. If the residual you have is the green line drawn here, then if you pick every other value of the residual, it's horribly misrepresented. Right. Every other point would be here, 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 here. So instead of a very oscillative residual that averages to zero, you would get a residual that looks like a very smooth function. You solve this on the cost grid and uh, your uh, correction would be pretty wrong. It may lead to divergence of multigrid uh, if the residual, if the smoothing didn't uh, make the residual to be smooth.